Okay, so welcome back. It's part two, the preparation for the SEO heist start to finish. So let's get into it. Let's do the preparation, the pre-planning stage of this heist that we're going to pull off. All right, so how many of us have gone into a project before and we have the best intentions, the best ideas, it's all in our head, it's locked and loaded, everything's working as intended. But then when you actually go to do it, something changes, scope changes, uh, someone comes in with new ideas. It turns out that, you know, you can't do it something a certain way or it doesn't scale right or any sort of BS that comes into a project. And then you're stuck because you've got to pivot on the fly. You've got to think of a new tactic. You've got to join the dots in a different way. You've got to draw a different picture. It sucks. Like it sucks all the time. How do we get past this issue? Preparation, preparation, preparation. This is how I would do preparation for the content heist. Like, and I think this is the most important stage. It's extremely helpful to be able to do this small bit of pre-planning. Fuck, this is the difference between getting caught and doing a successful heist. Right, so we're gonna start here doing the leverage statement. This is extremely simple, but very important to understand what we're doing, why we do it, and who is paying us to do this. It's just a sentence made up of three different parts. We get paid by someone to do something because reasons, right? Right. It's a super powerful statement because you have to understand who's paying you, why you're getting paid to do it. And the steps start to finish on how you're going to do this. It means that, you know, if you've got scope creep and, oh, we just need this and, oh, we just need that. And, oh, by the way, by the way, by the way, you know, we've, we've all been in projects where we've had this and it sucks. Going back to this statement, this leverage statement that just says, okay, this is what we're doing, this is why we're doing it. You can cut out a load of bullshit and you can fall back on something. It might seem like common sense, but to actually write this down and have everyone align around this North Star statement means that you're gonna be able to move faster, you're gonna be able to do a lot more work. But the outcome is really so that you have a system prompt that you can give to GPT, that you can give to other people. You know, the prompting just doesn't work just for uh, AI, it also works for humans as well. And you wanna know who we are, who I am, who pays you. Uh, what do you do to get paid and why do they pay you to do it and not someone else by the end of this video you're going to understand at least what the mission statement is or the leverage statement is and how that sets the entire heist strategy having a sentence or a structure that you can rely on and continually fall back on when you're making decisions or you're trying to convince someone is extremely powerful and in a skunkworks project like this where you have to continually make decisions very quickly you're dealing with new tech and new setups and scope creep can be massive. Having that leverage statement and mission plan stops you from fucking up. And in most cases will stop the project from dying. So let's create our leverage statement. This has helped me so many times when I'm trying to make decisions, trying to move fast, trying to build tech and wondering how to keep scope creep down and how to align stakeholders in a way that you get on with your work. You can let your brain do everything that you want to do without too much interruption. When you do get stuck and you do start ruminating on thoughts and unsure about the direction that you're in, having this statement, this North Star is really helpful. So let's make one. Let's make a leverage statement. Have a think about the project that you're doing right now, that the work that you're in, the business that you're running, the whatever that you're doing. In one sentence, describe to me exactly what you're doing, why you're doing it. Why does your business exist? Why is it a thing? Why are you making the decisions that you're making? Why are you doing the thing that you're doing? You have one sentence to do it in. How would you do it? This is the leverage statement. This is the be all and end all North Star statement to say, look, our business exists because of this. My project exists because of this. I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm putting my time and effort into it because of this. We get paid by someone to do something because reason. That's what we're crafting. That is our leverage statement. I get paid by who to do something because reason. The first bit, the who. Who's involved? Who's giving you money? Who do you build for? Where can you find them? Now, I could go into more depth here and say, I get paid by business owners that want to integrate AI into their workflows or aren't happy with their current SEO agency or content agency or performance ads agency, but keep it pretty high level for now. And how? I get paid by business owners too. What do you get paid to do? Like how, how do you get paid? What are you doing to get paid? So I get paid personally by business owners to integrate AI. The why, like why do you get paid? What's your leverage, which is where the, the name comes from, the leverage statement. What's your expertise? Why are you doing something? Why can't they do it themselves? Why won't they do it themselves? If they can do it themselves, why are they choosing you? If you've not seen it already, this can answer 90% of the decisions that you're doing throughout the entire content heist. So in my uh, example, I get paid by business owners to integrate AI because it's really too difficult to do it themselves. But this is the pain point. So I'm going to find Doug 
uh, who's talking all the time about this, who's an expert on this, and I'm going to get him to integrate AI and do practical stuff with AI plus my business, and I'm going to pay him for it. So if you want to use GPT to craft your own leverage statement, or at least get an idea, feel free to grab this prompt. I'm going to put it in the descriptions below. GPT, I am this person, so I'm a software developer, growth marketer that builds AI product, um, so I don't have to work for anyone else. You get paid by blank to do blank because la la la. And then it will spit out a few different examples of your leverage statement. Talk quickly about what makes a good mission statement versus what makes a shit one. All of this is about moving quickly, about being honest. It's not about doing wishy-washy marketing, Game of Thrones, sell tactics. It's about people getting shit done quickly and being realistic about uh, what we're trying to achieve. So for an example, for a cleaning service, we get paid by homeowners to clean their houses because they want a clean, healthy living environment. Like, if it sounds like marketing bullshit, it is marketing bullshit, right? It's all like we get paid by homeowners to clean their houses because they don't want to do it themselves. That is the pain point there. If you're thinking about the why of anything throughout this entire content heist, like what kind of content you need to be creating, why you're creating it, uh, what your CTA should be, because they don't want to do it themselves is a very strong pain point to be tackling and you know, clear in the example of fitness training. If you've got a personal fitness trainer, we get paid by individuals to help them achieve their fitness goals because they want to be healthier and feel better about themselves. It's pretty bullshit. So like we get paid by people to give them accountability and consequences because they lack the self-discipline to do it themselves. The consequences of this are, it's going to cost me and I have to turn up and you know, they're going to judge me if I don't and I can't wipe my own ass, but I'm going to get someone to do it for me. Like that is, that's a very strong why they're definitely you know it's you versus the people that are paying you there you've got something that they want there's typically a gap in the middle all right and that gap could be like skill or it could be time or it could be cost maybe you do it like cheaper than they can it could be priority and I foot somewhere in between all of these because I can do it faster. It's a bigger priority for me to come up with all of this research and how to build out these AI quantum setups and actually make money with it so think about the gap that you have the leverage that you have over it so this guy here we we all know him he is right, if you want to do this yourself and get some gpt examples then i'll put the, again this prompt down in the description so you can grab it tailor it to your own cause but making a whole workflow out of this very candid uh, leverage statement so now we've got the mission statement we can finally get around to the the actual the reasoning for doing it like we can refine this down so that we have the north star statement that we're going to use for literally everything we're going to use it for gpt and we're going to use it for our ai prompts so that you know we can be as specific as possible we're going to use it to uh, make decisions we're going to use it to convince stakeholders we're going to use it to the problem with mine i said i get paid by business owners to integrate ai because it's too difficult to do yourself this isn't a great bit here business owners is far too generic integrate ai I also super generic, right? What we really need to think about is it get paid by target audience to do an action because CTA. Let's think about how we could refine this a little further. So think about how to be as granular as possible so that you're not being generic. If you put any of this into GPT, generic prompts get rid of generic results, definitely. And you're not going to get the same quality as if you said, okay, I get paid by digital first content heavy um, reliant business owners in the USA and Europe who speak English that you know the owners are scrappy practical forward thinking growth mindset get shit done um, are experts in the field and they need to look at other ways to do this hopefully you can see by now why having this statement is so important because when we think about what type of content we're going to do what keywords we're going to go after and like what uh, methods and techniques and channels are we going to chase all right, congratulations, you got your leverage statement. That's wicked marketing messaging aside. Like the reason why we're doing this essentially is because we want to avoid, you know, the prompt trap. And what is the prompt trap? The prompt trap is what you put in, you generally get out. And okay, so it, in general, like anything from an LLM is pretty generic. It's trained on like the sum of all of its data. But if you're putting generic shit in, like business owners integrating AI because it's too difficult and you're expecting to get something genius out of it, then it's, you know it doesn't work <laughs> you've already tried it before generic in is generic out if you put in something generic that you can end up with content that doesn't resonate or solve problems good example on my videos everything here i'm talking exactly how to do it into everything every single part of my framework on how to build all of this ai flow for practical businesses that want to put ai into not just theory crafting this but actually how do you go from start to finish to do this i'm someone that's doing this for clients that are paying me to do it and getting results that's not something that you're going to find out there and this is 
my content leverage. You know, it's my expertise, it's my knowledge. If you have a site and it's extremely generic, talking about why you should save money for taxes, because you need to pay taxes. It's crap. No one's going to give your site or your business or your consultancy any time of day if you're saying extremely generic things that don't resonate with your target audience. Let's assume that our audience are not dumb and you need to be able to give them the signals that you are their people. I am your people. I am not dumb. Or if you come work with them, we're going to get on. We're going to gel. We've got the same curiosity team. We've got the same everything essentially but the, if you're putting generic in you're just going to appeal to what the most average and the worst thing really is that your ctas are going to suck because you're just being too generic on the flip side if you do a very detailed in and you can give gpt a, exactly what you're um you're about this is who i am if you have something extremely detailed and you put it into your black box into your machine the magic where the magic happens in here if you give it lots of detailed in it's going to give it a detailed out in terms of generated content it's going to address those immediate concerns. You're going to read this and you're going to go, hey, I'm this business owner. I'm relying on content heavy digital first overheads and I want to cut them down. And you know, I'm scrappy and I'm practical and I'm forward thinking and I just want to get shit done. I speak English and I'm in Europe. That's me. They're talking to me. That's, that's powerful, right? Compared to where you're saying, hey, software development to build a website. <laughs> No one cares about that. But if you're saying, okay, look, this is how I'm going to use Tailwind to react Next.js with server components and server actions to build a Twitch clone that can do this, that, and the other powered by uh, GPT for Mistral and, you know, whatever. That's way more powerful as a piece of content and it's doable in your magic black box. You also find that your content gels well together because you you become an expert in the domain about everything that you want because you can if you're generic about stuff like, like back to the circle diagram we love circle diagrams right this is going to be like the sum of like everything that you can teach someone here and if you're being generic about something you can probably only fit so many articles in there on stuff that's being generic if you're being super nuanced and you're really experts in your domain you know that you can fit in way more stuff than they can into all these different content hubs but in order to get to those content hubs, you need to be extremely detailed in what you're focusing on. And this detailed in here is going to help you get to that. Uh, when you're doing a Skunk Works project, it is important to move quickly and to try things. But we're taking a swing and a generic swing is not going to hit the same way as a detailed swing, I promise you. Right, so we know what the leverage statement is. We know why it's important. We know we want to be detailed as possible. We don't want to fall into that generic trap. And, and we know that we need a solid foundation, which is this, the leverage statement, to get there. But we can use it for GPT. We can use it for solving problems. And we can use it to drive our decision making. In the next video, we're going to use that leverage statement and everything that we have to set up our objectives and our goals. The main one being this one, the growth levers. If you're trying to sell absolutely anything into anyone whether it's teammates uh, ceo clients potentials or yourself growth levels are a way to put practical numbers against something that's theoretic right now thanks so much if you got to the end of the video uh, give me some feedback down below let me know what you thought of it let me know your leverage statement as well and um, i'm definitely going to just be reading through all of them and i'll help you out if you need any help with that as well all right so like comment subscribe all of that shit uh, get me on discord it's all going to be down in the description i think i hope if I, unless i forget yeah have a sick one and i will catch you in the next video about objectives